At the moment, Arabic subtitles is available for this video and you can find it by going to settings and switching the subtitles from English to Arabic. And there you go, you will start seeing the Arabic subtitles. في هذا الفيديو تتوفر الترجمة باللغة العربية ما عليك سوى الذهاب إلى الإعدادات واختيار اللغة العربية بدلا عن اللغة الإنجليزية وبذلك تستطيع رؤية الكلمات أسفل الفيديو Good afternoon and may peace be upon you Welcome again to a new video on my YouTube channel In today's video we are going to talk about one of the most requested questions that is very frequently asked to me directly on Facebook or on Instagram which is about the life expenses in Germany as a student so uh, I wanted to answer this question and all the details related to it uh, so you can have an idea and full understanding of what you are going to face when you come to Germany as you may all know already in order to come to Germany you will have to provide a blog account with uh, an amount of 10,000 236 euro and um, this block account is actually for your own good uh, because you are going to need this money to live throughout the first year I, I know they have raised it from 8,000 uh, euros to 10,000 something euros uh, this is because the life is just not getting any cheaper anymore um, and I will explain to you in details where you are going to use this money You have to keep in mind that uh, there are two types of costs that will be uh, facing you when you come to study in Germany. The first type is um, fixed expenses and the other one is variable expenses. And what I mean when I say fixed is that this money will be withdrawn from your bank account automatically every month. And usually this money starts to be withdrawn from your bank account once you fill in a formula and will be stopped once you also apply officially and fill a paper for the cancellation. Those fixed expenses will include the rent, the health insurance, your expenses for heating, water and electricity, plus uh, internet, your needs for making phone calls or getting 3G on your mobile phone, the contribution fees of your university, not the tuition fees, contribution fees, and I will explain this uh, later. Also, one unexpected expenses that you will have to pay in Germany is the radio and TV, which will be paid by household. The other type of expenses which I call variable expenses is mainly because it will be depending on your own decisions and uh, what, what kind of lifestyle you want to live. And those variable expenses, for example, include your food uh, and your leisure time. It can also include uh, travel expenses if you ever wanted to travel somewhere and of course uh, something like if you want to do some uh, intensive German courses for example or English courses. In addition you have uh, some cost or some expenses for the transportation means and this will depend on your choice. Also we will get to that afterwards. So mainly I will go now through every category and explain every possible expenses that you could face. So stay tuned and watch me till the end of the video. The first and the biggest expenses that you will have to pay when you come to Germany is the rent. And the rent expenses will usually range from 200 euros to 600 euros depending on your choice. Germany is unfortunately expensive when it comes to rent, especially if you compare it to uh, countries like Poland or Czech Republic or Italy. On the other hand, it's less expensive than countries like Denmark and Switzerland. You have actually several choices and based on your choice, this uh, expenses will range. On the one hand, you might get lucky and get something that is relatively cheap, uh, for example by the student resident. On the other hand, it might get uh, very expensive for you, for example in the cases where you need to live in the city center or in a very big and uh, expensive city like Munich. However, the intermediate solution between those two extremes is to get something like what we call here in Germany Wege Wohngemeinschaft and it means like flat sharing. So you either you yourself 
uh, rent a flat, a whole flat, and then you rent it to the other students. Um, so you have one room for yourself and the other rooms you will rent to other students. This way you will support each other with paying all the ex other expenses and also the rent. Or you can just be the student who rent a room from this big flat that is shared with other students. Which way you choose will of course depend on the time you are coming to Germany, on the time you are looking for an apartment and also your luck. And each one of them has its own advantages and disadvantages. Of course it has an effect on your budget. Maybe at the beginning try to get something, whatever that gets you through, uh, especially at the beginning. And then when you get to know the life in Germany you can switch later. One more note that you have also to know, it's very normal that after some time when you rent a place that it will increase slightly, uh, not much, it shouldn't get much higher, but it might be the case that they will increase it a few euros over time. You can also check my other video about accommodation which is uh, in Arabic spoken language but it's also translated to English so you can check it in this link here. This range of costs is including uh, what we call in Germany Nebenkosten, uh, the additional cost. That it will include, for example, something like water consumption, heating consumption, trash related topics, and also cleaning the stairs or the building, something like this. However, bear in mind that in some cases, especially if you are not living in the student resident, sometimes at the end of the year you might get what we call Nachzahlungs. I will explain this. They take certain amount of money during the year, every month during the year, but then uh, they calculate it back and see that you have consumed much more heating than what is calculated for you. So in that case, you will get like additional cost on what you have paid already and you will have to pay back for what you have consumed in the last year. So my advice is always to keep some money aside because it might be the case that at the end of the year or the beginning of the new year you have to pay some amount of money for the last year. And the same applies for electricity. Electricity is not considered within your rent, also not within your additional costs that are called the Nebenkosten. For this you have to pay for yourself. And if you are living in the student resident, this is the cheapest, so you have to pay around 25 euros. If you are living in a shared flat, of course, this will be divided on each person based on the flat consumption. For the electricity, you have no special treatment for students. You have to pay for it just as a normal person and it will range between 25 euros to 50 euros. And just like the neighbor costing, it's like fixed amount of money that will be withdrawn from your bank account. However, it will be recalculated at the end of the year. You either get some money back or you have to pay more because you have just consumed more. And also again, keep some money. <laughs> yeah, the poor student. Uh, keep a little bit amount of money so you are not surprised eventually with this and you have something to pay for. As we said before, one surprising expenses that you will have to pay even that you are a student. Uh, once you come to Germany, by household there is something that you pay for the radio and the TV. I call it just the ZDF expenses. It's like uh, 52 euros every three months that you have to pay. Wherever you are living or whatever you are doing, you will have to pay this. There is no escape of this and please, please, Try not to postpone this or like ignore it because it will accumulate afterwards and you will get into paying a much bigger amount of money rather than just paying the 52 euros. Because I know some people do this and uh, it might be the case that some people don't make you pay this because it's by household so if you are living in a shared flat Maybe the one who has the contract on his name is the one who is paying for this and you don't have to pay for it directly. So it might be already included in your rent. A special case for students like people who have the backup, uh, which is like a student loan that is given for some German students and uh, refugees for example. 
to help them go through their studies. In this patient case, you get a paper from Studentenwerk that you don't have to pay for the ZDF and they will pay it for you. But uh, also in this case, you will have to send this paper or a scan of this paper that you get to the ZDF. Well, okay, I got the name exactly for this ZDF <laughs> expenses. So it's called actually Zahlung der Rundfunkbeiträge, which means actually like a broadcast contribution. <laughs> I, I just have learned this word today. So yeah, this you will get like uh, in a post this way. And then you will have to either fill a paper and send it back or you will have to uh, like make it as an automatic withdrawal from your bank account and that will be also every month or every three months you can decide this on your own and <laughs> believe me wherever you go this will follow you and for your information this is just for the sake of keeping the media and like tv and radio uh, like uh, bias free that they are not always like cheering for the government they will be free and honest and open uh, about everything and therefore they are funded from the people not from the government nowadays nobody can live without internet and you will need internet of course for everything it's more important than food now and for the internet you will have to pay between 10 to 15 euros if you are living in a shared flat or you are living in the student residence and this is very cheap but it can also get up to 50 euros uh, if you are getting the internet from the best providers like telecom for example and you are living on your own Health insurances are the most expensive thing that you can get in Germany uh, when you aren't a student. However, you are lucky, you are a student and you are coming to Germany as a student, then this implies that you get student health insurance. Health insurances can start from 35 euros, which is something that I doubt, honestly, it's just something that I have read. The regular case is that you will have to pay for a health insurance of an amount of 95 euros per month. And this was the case when I was a student. I think I have heard that it has increased to 100 and 10 euros you will have to check with the health insurance that you will get yourself anyway this is one of the requirements when you get to germany and this is something that students um, really save a lot of money with because you just pay a symbolic amount of money for the health insurance and with this uh, student health insurance you have almost the same privileges as the normal person who is paying a lot of money for health insurance so you have uh, free checkups with the doctors free treatment after uh, an accident or uh, after illness uh, sometimes some medications are also for free however bear in mind that there are two exceptions for the student's health insurance as you might know, there is no age restriction in most of the universities in Germany and most of the programs in Germany. So you are free to study in the German universities at any age. However, if you are more than 30 years old and you are studying in the German universities, in this case, you will have to pay more than the regular student for the health insurance. And this will be at least another 110 euros. The other exception is that also starting your 14th semester, the health insurance will be increasing a lot uh, for you and it will no longer be like a regular student. The good news with the other exception regarding the 14th semester is that uh, if you have studied outside Germany, no matter how long your studies were, they are not calculated when you come to Germany. So when you come to Germany, you will start from semester zero. Uh, it was something that I was terrified about because I did a diploma and here I uh, took some time with my master degree. So um, yeah, just don't worry, check or even if you were requested to pay more than what you have to pay. You need to follow up on this because you shouldn't be treated like if you have studied here in Germany because you didn't have the insurance from the first place. The dentist. So, as I said before, health insurances do not cover dental cases. So, whenever you want to go to the dentist, you will have to pay for this. I mean, a regular checkup is for free, once a year, I think, or once every six months. 
it will depend on your insurance but if you have to do a filling the filling itself is a lot of money i still remember when i was a student it was something big because you will have to pay for example between 80 to 100 euros for one filling so um, if you have bad teeth like i do you will have to pay a lot of money on the other hand there is a good option maybe there are also some dental insurances but this is also another topic and it can be paid per month the only two things that health insurances would pay for you is in case you want to take out any teeth so taking out the teeth is for free for example wisdom teeth and on the other hand they will also pay for you to clean your teeth once a year or once every six months and this will of course depend on your health insurance so before you pick up one of those health insurances check out what are the privileges you get for your information there is a huge difference between tuition fees and contribution fees tuition fees are in germany almost free so in most of the german universities you don't have to pay any tuition fees uh, however there are contribution fees and those contribution fees are to be paid every semester so once you enroll not get the acceptance once you enroll and so you choose to study in this university then you will have to pay those contribution fees and at the end of each semester you will have to pay for the next semester uh, of course there are some dates for this and this includes also the basic semester ticket so it includes some amount of money for your transportation needs so those contribution fees will cover part of your transportation means in the area so you will get a, what we call basic semester ticket that will allow you to travel with the transportation means in the evening or on the weekends for free in the area where you are studying the rest of those contribution fees uh, goes really into a lot of things that i will not go through now um, but it's all related to your university the contribution fees of the German universities range between uh, 100 euros to 350 euros uh, depending on the university and the city and also the state. Um, anyway, what I wanted to say also that uh, if you choose the state Baden-Württemberg uh, for your studies, your university is there. Be aware and keep in mind that there are tuition fees. This is no longer for free, especially if you are a non-AU student. So any international student from outside the European Union will have to pay at least 1,500 euros. And this is just tuition fees, which is not there in the other universities. As I said, transportation is a little bit different from one person to another and it will depend on where you are living. So if you are living near to the university, you can just get by using a bicycle. So you don't really need anything more than the basic car, which will take you anywhere in your area for free during the weekends or holidays and also in the evening after 7 o'clock. The other case, if you weren't that lucky and you are not living in the center of the city or near to the university, in this case you will need to use bus or train and um, it will be now up to you. You either have the choice to buy those single tickets each time if you know yourself you're not going that much to the university and this is much cheaper for you if you don't buy a full ticket or you pay additional amount of money and get the full semester ticket which is just an addition to your basic ticket for, so for example you pay between 60 or 80 euros up to 200 euros depending on the area where you are living in the university you are registering in and then you have access to all transportation means in your area. This ticket will allow you to use any kind of uh, public transportation means like, uh, like buses, trains and uh, undergrounds or trams but not the ETA for this as I said in another video you will have to pay for yourself. But this ticket is working all over the day anytime and it's to be considered pretty cheap because um, for persons who are not students, you have to pay much more money for, for getting a ticket that will work for everything. 
But if you know yourself that you are not going that much to the university, especially now with the corona time, everything is done online. So for example here you probably don't need the full semester ticket. You can just survive by using the single tickets every time you need to use the bus. And this way this is much cheaper for you. For your own personal expenses, something like I want to buy a trouser, I want to buy a new dress, I want to buy something new, whatever this thing is. Um, this is something that we call in Germany Taschengeld, pocket money. So in this case, this will also depend on you and uh, on your expenses and on your kind of lifestyle so if you are the type of person that would want to buy buy something every month or every few days this will be a lot of money for you so it will be as an average uh, between 80 to 100 euros per month that you can do something this 100 euros also would cover the needs for your university like printing some papers or getting a laptop or something so it's not like monthly calculated there are some places where you can get discounts for students especially if you're buying for example a laptop or something but um, you have to check for this before you buy something and anything you buy related to your studies is to be uh, reimbursed for your taxes. So whenever you start working in Germany, hopefully after your studies, you can reclaim those taxes you have paid for buying a laptop for example or for buying a mobile phone because the finance aunt will assume that you have used this for your studies. So it is considered to be your right to claim those taxes. Food. And who doesn't like food? It will cost you between 175 euros up to 250 euros But if you kind of live carefully on this, you will manage to go through safely If you want to depend on yourself and cook on your own, not to go to a restaurant every day, you will be living just fine However, your expenses will start to increase once you uh, decide to go to restaurants because some restaurants are expensive, you can also eat at the university but if you have to eat at the university every day in the canteen this will also be some kind of cost. Uh, the basics in all the markets are in general cheap, however things like detergents, uh, cleaning means or sweets, anything like uh, chocolate or something like this, it's sort of expensive comparing to the basics. So in the basics, when I say basics, things like oil, milk, bread, uh, flour, uh, things like this are very cheap. So it will really range between 50 cents to some few euros, uh, but it, it is at the hand of everyone. I have seen when I have come to Germany that relatively comparing to my country, so in Syria, fruit and vegetables were more expensive. Uh, but I think, I mean, you get used to it. However, please don't uh, forbid yourself from good nutrition. Uh, try to cook, meet new friends, uh, cook together and eat together and give your body the right amount of vitamins and minerals because you will need to be strong for your studies. On the other hand, I would say also, yeah, you cannot forbid yourself from having fun or going out someday for a restaurant to change a little bit, but don't do it like every day. If you do this every day, you will have a problem, but like do it every two weeks or, or something like this. Go somewhere with friends and, and have some fun. I mean, you can sometimes find some meals that are relatively cheaper. You have here some things that are really famous, like uh, for example, Duna, or you have shawarma, you have noodle, you have McDonald's, KFC, those kind of stuff. Going to a restaurant will cost you, in the normal case, and then on average, if you go to an average restaurant, you will pay between 20 euros up to 25 euros. And of course you have to tip the waiter who is serving you and the tips in Germany are between 5 to 10 percent. This is also a personal preference but I know a lot of people who don't do this. Um, it's just like um, 
the waiters themselves are students like you, so I think you have to tip. The language courses at the university is for free. You can enroll in one of the courses that the university offers for free. Uh, you don't have to pay anything for this, but it's like the usual case is that in the uh, beginner levels, it's also always the case that it's very crowded um, and you don't have the chance to get into one of the classes. So what people tend to do is to take what is called intensive course. And those courses will cost you between 200 euros up to 400 euros and depending on the university and the courses offered also the level um, but in this case you can finish like one whole level in just a few days in the semester break or something so this is one potential expenses that you might have to pay and if you are the kind of person that is adventurous or if you just want to have some air just a little bit of break from your studies you can of course travel here you have a very strategic location in Germany, you are in the heart of Europe and in the heart of the world. So if you need to visit your parents or you wanted to visit some European country on the surrounding or wherever you want to go. Or if you wanted to do a semester in another university in another country. In this case of course you have some additional costs for traveling itself. Um, it will depend also on you, on your choices and on the time you are traveling but you have a lot of choices that can range from being cheap to very expensive and it will depend also on where you are going to. Um, this can range from things like blah blah car or uh, car sharing or you have also ETA and going on a flight can really range in prices from going with small companies to big companies and on the distance you are going through uh, we can really talk about this topic in another video but I wanted just to give you like a general overview um, and as I said I cannot really yeah, calculate this in the expenses because um, it will really really depend on what you are taking Doing sport in Germany as a student have sometimes some privileges. And what I mean by student privileges in this case is that you have the opportunity to register in the sport facility that is offered by the university. So you have a lot of sport activities and facilities that are sponsored by your university. And this is certainly available in each German university, I believe so. Uh, because the Germans believe that the sport is part of your life. For example, in my former university, you had the chance to do a lot of courses and use also the gym at the university for 50 euros per year, not per month, per year. However, you can also register by yourself privately in any sport club. Sport clubs are all over the place in Germany. And the amount of money that you have to pay monthly for sport clubs would range between 20 euros up to 70 euros. And when I say about the 70 euros, I mean those kind of clubs that are, for example, just for women or uh, has some kind of luxury in there, like massages or, or um, uh, sauna or something. Um, but the general case, the, just the normal average case is 20 euros. And this kind of sport clubs can be found in each and every city. Um, if you choose to go on in for private sport clubs, of course, there are also some hidden fees, I would say. <laughs> I call it hidden fees because you don't consider it at the beginning. There are some kind of registration fees. There are also additional costs for uh, drinks sometimes. Uh, so you cannot bring your own drinks, you will have to buy it. If you are um, a person who really care about his uh, health and do a lot of sport I would recommend going to the university one because it has really a lot of potential that is not available somewhere else and at a very very low cost and uh, probably this kind of sport facility is usually close to your university so if you are living anywhere close to your university you will also have 
and easy access to the sport facility. Of course, in the case when you are living very far from your university from the first place, then probably a private sport club would be the best choice for you. One more note about sport clubs, just in case I don't have the chance to say this in another video. Um, please be aware, uh, whenever you do some kind of uh, registration, you be a member of some sport club, let's say. Or if you do some kind of contract with internet provider or, or your mobile phone contract or whatsoever. It's always the case that your membership and your obligation to pay a monthly fee automatically extended. So be sure to cancel this sometime before. Uh, so you always have some kind of Kundigung frist. Uh, where you have some time where you notify the sport club that you want to cancel your membership and then they stop but if you don't do this in a written form it will be automatically extended and then you end up paying for the sport club for the next year just like that the same goes for internet mobile phone everything so whenever you have to do some kind of contract please read the contract through if you don't know the german language that well uh, insist that you need English help, so always insist and uh, read carefully, use Google Translate, use whatever you have. I always, whenever I sign something, especially for some kind of membership or something, I directly look into the Kundigung part, the cancellation part, because you will need to understand when can I cancel. Maybe I talk about this uh, thing in another video, but just in case. Anyway, now I know that you know this information, uh, so good luck. For your mobile phone, in order to be uh, able to make phone calls with your friends or with your parents or whomever, um, just like normal phone calls, not on WhatsApp or something, um, you would need, of course, to charge your phone. As in any uh, other country, you have two options. You have either the option to do a regular contract where you use whatever you use and then at the end of the month you pay something or you have the option of having a prepaid SIM card where you load your uh, phone card uh, with some amount of euros and you use some kind of package. The normal tariff, the normal fees are like between 10 euros up to 20 or 25 euros. Um, I would really recommend having not a contract that you would pay every month because this might be the case that maybe maybe you make a phone call that will cost you really a lot of money and then you end up arguing with the people in the company why I am paying this much of money. Therefore the best solution for you as a student also in general this is the best option is to choose the prepaid one. Even with big companies and big providers you have this option as well because you as a student you don't need to make a lot of phone calls here and you usually have internet and wi-fi connection at home and at the university so maybe on the way between home and university you would need a little bit of 3G. Quickly, some of the providers for this kind of prepaid uh, cards are something like what I really prefer, Ortel for example. And you have of course the big two providers like uh, Telecom and Vodafone. Um, in addition to all of those, what I have said earlier, and, uh, I would like to also say that as a student, maybe you will have to think whether to have a car or not. Of course, it will depend on your marital status. So if you are married and you have children, I think this is kind of a necessity. But this will also imply that you will have to pay more money and you will need to spend more money. Uh, because for a car, you will need to consider a parking place. You will need to pay for a parking place. You will need to pay for the insurance. You will need to pay for for the gas, for the maintenance, and also for the car itself. Um, so maybe, yeah, think about this. Um, it, it's probably not a must for you at the beginning when you come here, uh, but it's of course still up to you. So guys, in general, this was all the kind of expenses that you can get or expect while you are living here in Germany as a student. Of course, if you finish your studies, unfortunately, the expenses are much higher than this. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately. 
Uh, bear in mind also as a student usually don't pay that much of taxes um, once you finish studying you will pay a lot of taxes um, your health insurance will get much higher things will change somehow you start to feel like an adult I'm like now starting to feel this after my I finished my studies so you can see how happy I am now all the time paying money yeah expenses all the time um, I know the amount of money that you have to provide for the block account is too much. It seems too much for you, especially if you are coming from some countries where the currency is very different. Um, but this is really for you. You will be living a decent life where you don't have to be in any way lessening in your food or living on the street. You will be just living normal um, you have some kind of stress I know that you will have to always keep some money or, or pay attention for what you are spending here and there um, I, I know this feeling I have been through this but still I would say it's much better than when you have to study somewhere like in Canada or America yeah, where, where you have to pay a lot a lot of money just for tuition fees Germany is providing this for you almost for free um, so what you are paying with the block account or while you are working and studying is just for yourself and for your own uh, expenses and you don't have to live forever with loans that will yeah, keep bringing you down once you finish your studies you will be mind free you will just focus on finding a decent job and live on with your life so this is why I think Germany is really, is really, really good. I know that I have given you a little bit of shock. I, I'm sorry about this, but I wanted you to be aware of everything that could come to you and what kind of life you would be facing. Uh, it's not easy, but also it's very good. You will learn a lot. You will meet a lot of people and um, you will graduate from Germany. This is a big plus. I hope that you liked the video and in case you know somebody who needs to know this kind of information please share the video with them and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet and don't forget to enable the notifications to stay updated because I really have a lot of information to share with you and hopefully as we say in my country inshallah and um, if I have uh, enough time I will do a lot more of videos and, and I will share all the information with you so you can get on the right foot when you come to Germany. I wish you the best and good luck with your applications. Stay safe and see you in the next video. Bye bye.